All right, all right. Welcome to another episode of So Texas Outdoors Podcast. Today, if you like adventure hunting, want to hear a super cool story, or have you ever thought about going out to Alaska to chase a DIY moose, this is the episode for you. We're going to talk about DIY moose hunt in Alaska, specifically drift hunting. Uh, the recap of the hunt, I got a special guest with me today uh, who's done this a couple times, so I'm going to pick his brain about it. Welcome to the show, Mr. Ethan Walls. Welcome to the, from uh, New Divide Outdoors. Oh, man. Thanks for having me. Honored to honored to be here, man. Yeah, no, so. That's awesome, man. Thanks. Thanks for coming out, man. It's always good to talk to a fellow outdoorsman, backcountry, adventure hunting type of guy, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. No kidding. <laughs> it's, uh, it's just different from... From here in, in the big state of Texas, it's, it's way different to go out west or even where you went out in Alaska, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, but it's all relevant, you know. Hunting's all the same, so. True, true. <laughs> That's true. Uh, but it, it, and we'll get into it. This is, this hunt you did is just awesome. Dude. It's like next level stuff, man. <laughs> Strip hunting, <laughs> DIY moves. Um, but, uh, you know, for anybody out there who hasn't seen, uh, Ethan's uh, content, check out New Divide Outdoors on, on YouTube. He's, he's got, he just released a, a moose hunt, DIY moose hunt he did in Alaska, and uh, it was pretty awesome. Um, before we get into all that, let's uh, give him a little background about yourself, how you got into the outdoors. Uh, well, I guess a little personal stuff. I just turned 30 this year. Oh, um, congrats. Never, ne- yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I just turned 50. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 20 years on <laughs> I never, never really thought I'd be, uh, you know, be two moose hunts down, uh, before, before I turned 30, but, uh, yeah, it just, just happens that way. Yeah. Um, as far as getting into the outdoors, really, um, you know, I guess I just come by it honestly. My, my dad was a hunter, you know, his dad's a hunter, um, and his dad was a hunter. Um, you know, I got pictures at home, uh, uh, my great grandpa and my grandpa, you know, with deer and, 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 uh, you know, hunts they did. And, um, I guess shoot probably my earliest memories are sitting in a deer blind with my, my parents and on the boat fishing. So, I mean, I, I don't know, it was either, either, you know, it wasn't really a choice. You, you yeah. went with them and enjoyed it or you went with them and, and, uh, you know, you're miserable. So it was like, well, might as well enjoy it. And, uh, you know, I guess that's about how it, how it happened nothing nothing too crazy <laughs> yeah pretty much born into it kind of like i was yeah <laughs> kind of born into it yeah and, I mean, basically <laughs> and, we're, and we're and we're blessed i mean it does you know i think we're we're very blessed to, to grow up in a hunting family oh in yeah my, in my opinion um oh yeah so yeah you did a diy hunt and uh uh spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the content congrats on a successful hunt man uh, that, oh thanks that man was a Awesome, awesome bull that you shot. And uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Uh, before we get into all that, you know, uh, you know, what got you into wanting to put your content out there and, you know, in the YouTube world? Um, uh, the number one reason, honestly, was to preserve, you know, memories like, you know, doing like this moose hunt. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of hard to put into words, you know, exactly um, everything that goes on or, or, uh, you know, ex- explain to, you know, somebody that's never been to Alaska or anything, you know, explain, explain to them, you know, what, what the, you know, sights and sounds are and all that kind of cool stuff, you know, in new places. Um, and then, uh, you know, also to basically kind of look back and, and learn from, you know, previous hunts, you know, where I, you know, messed up or should have done this or should have done that or what I did right. Um, you know, and kind of, kind of, you know, it's, it's funny. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell hunting stories of people, you know, that don't hunt as often or, or, you know, have the same opportunities, I guess, you know, and they, they're always like, ah, you know, I wish I could do that, you know, or I'd like to do that one day. And it's like, well, I mean, I, you know, here, here's the, you know, like the, that mo- this moose hunt, you know, I recorded all of it. So, you know, I guess you could say inspire others to, you know, go do, different adventures you know that they they you know dream about doing and and uh just haven't you know pulled the trigger on so there's that and then uh i don't know i pretty much just eat sleep and breathe you know hunting and fishing so it's like well might as well just <laughs> yes, just uh awesome. just do it anyways so 
Yeah, awesome. That's cool. Yeah, and I think t- with today's technology, it's so easy. You know, it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's just so much you know, to pull out our phone and just, you know, record. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and, and capture some of those. You know, I wish I had some of those memories as a kid growing up, you know, on, on, yeah. on film, tape, or video, whatever you want to call it. So, no, that's super cool. Um, but yeah, uh, Ethan did a awesome drift hunt in Alaska and like that, <laughs> that whole drift hunt idea, man, when I first saw you put that, I was like, dude, what? <laughs> like, that's super <laughs> cool. Like you just keep floating down river. Uh, cause I mean, that's new to me too. I hadn't heard of such a hunt other than, um, you know, some backcountry people get, you know, use those, uh, alpacas and practice, yeah. you know, oh, crafts yeah. and. And use it to cross rivers and that kind of stuff. But an actual drift hunt, explain that a little bit. Like, are, is it, are you dropped off and picked up at two different locations or how does that work? Yeah. I mean, it's similar to like how you just described, you know, people take rafts and, you know, you cross a river, you know, get from here so they can hunt this spot and then, you know, get out of there. It's pretty much about the same thing. Um, it's just your, your trek is, is a bit longer. Um, so, you know, the way we've done it, and I know people do it differently. You know, there's places where, you know, you say you can park under a road, leave your vehicle and, and, uh, you know, float down and, and, you know, a plane picks you up over here or a buddy picks you up at a next bridge or whatever. But the way we do it is we just, you know, take a air transporter, which is, you know, either a float plane or a plane with, uh, tundra tires on it and get dropped off uh you know the river that we're wanting to hunt and the plane leaves and it's we're you know you're on your own for however long you plan on being out there and then you basically just have a a uh, specified you know predetermined pickup location um uh, you know that is where you should be but you know you have a uh you know satellite communication you know with your transporter in case you know, bad weather comes in or something, you got to get picked up somewhere else or, you know, float further or, or, uh, you know, say the river's up and you can't make it and you got to figure out somewhere else to get picked up. So. Gotcha. So I guess, um, you gotta, you gotta be in communication with your, uh, with your outfitter or whoever's going to pick you up, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, and the thing is too, like you get, you get all the, all that stuff planned out pretty detailed beforehand to where it's like, you know, you have, plan a plan b plan c oh, okay. and you just kind of work down the list um and those, and those transporters up there in alaska they're they're real good about communicating you know if if say your uh pickup days you know two three days away and they're like hey you know there's supposed to be weather coming in uh you know you might need to hurry so we can get you before or just be prepared it might be three days before we can you know three days past that that uh you know, date that, that we picked, you know, to pick you up, it might, you might have to wait there for three days before we can get to you. You know, so I mean, right. communication okay. be- beforehand, yeah, is, is a big deal. Right. And as far as the hunt itself, so it seemed like from what I could tell you're, you're, fl- you're floating down river and then, you know, you get out and hunt this area and you, you don't like that area, you, you keep going down river until. So you find yeah. a place you like or find some sign or whatever. I'm assuming that's, that's how it works. Yeah. The um, yeah. The, the hunt, it's, there's a couple ways to do it. Um, some people like to just pick up the oars and float down the, the river, you know, as silent as they can. And just hoping that they come across, you know, a moose that's bedded up on the riverbank and they, they spot him, you know, before he either, smells them or sees them and takes off or, um, you know, they'll stop at each sandbar and just kind of watch the sandbars closest to them, um, you know, and just hunt for an evening or morning and then go on. Um, you can also, you know, this is what, this is what we do is we'll float, look for sign on a sandbar. Um, and, you know, you, 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 you want to find fresh, tra- the freshest sign. So fresh tracks, uh, trees that have been, you know, raked on with, which is no different than like, you know, white tail, you know, making a rub on a tree. Right. Um, you know, you look, look for that, just the freshest stuff you can find. And if it looks good, you know, hang out there for a day. And a lot of times, like with moose, 
you'll find that sign on a riverbank and it'll be, um, there'll be a, like a, a lake or a bog, you know, just off into the, into the, you know, spruce or, okay. you know, trees and brush there. And so you'll, you'll kind of, you know, just scout out the area while you're looking for sign. while after you find that sign and, uh, you know, kind of make a play from there. Uh, what we do a lot of times is we'll find that sign on the beach and then, or, you know, the, the, uh, gravel bar sandbar and hunt that nearby bog or or lake you know depending on if it looks like uh you know it's a little more open gives you a little more area to to watch and stuff like that so so was that your strategy going into it pretty much just looking for sign on sandbars and um yeah for the most part um to me floating down the river just watching while you're floating is uh it's kind of difficult because you're also paying attention to you know rowing and and all that kind of stuff and it gets a little gets a little tricky um not that you can't do it but it's just to me when you're hunting you want your attention on hunting and not you know floating um so our our plan pretty much from the get-go was basically you know you find find good sign and stay there give it enough time to where we can, you know, make a determination. Well, you know, there's moose gone. There's the moose are gone, or it's just not worth. You know, they're they're gone, and it's not worth staying here. Or they're here. Let's give it a little more time, and hopefully, you know, there's there's a legal bull that comes in, and and we can you know get opportunity at him. Cool, cool. So uh, once you found a spot uh, to pull over and. And uh, I guess work that area. Are you mostly glassing? Are you call? I, I know you did a lot of calling on the video. A lot of, mm-hmm. uh, you did some raking and and some calling. Was, was that your pretty much your game plan? And see, uh, at each area. Or? Uh, yeah, for the for the most part, um, both really glassing and calling. Because um, a lot of times, you know, the moose tend to. Um, they don't like, they don't, they're kind of in slow motion. They don't move a whole lot. Um, they'll hang out, you know, in the, in the dark timber most mm-hmm. of the day. Um, if it's, is if it's not real cold, they're going to stay in that dark timber until, you know, late, late evening, you know, right before, before the sun goes down or early morning. And, uh, you know, they might just be right up in the brush and, and, you know, if you spend enough time behind the glass, you might see a bull, you know, turn his head while he's in the, in the, in the timber and, and, uh, you know, you can see he's there, figure out he's there, you know, see a, a cow moving, moving through the timber. But, uh, and then also some of the, some of the lakes that, that uh, you come across, you know, they're, you, they're probably dang near a mile long, you know, so, I mean, you got to, you need you need binoculars and, and a spotting scope, you know, to, to be able to look across. Um, but yeah, it's just it's really really just a, a mixture of glassing and calling. Um, and then as far as calling, you know, you got you got raking, you know, which is basically taking something, you know, a paddle or a, a uh, what they call it is a uh, a bull magnet, and it's basically just a fiberglass funnel, and you know, you just rub it along, you know, tree branches, you know basically it's no different really than sort of mimicking the sound of a white tail rubbing his antlers on a, on a bush or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then also, uh, you know, cow calling, but it, it really depends on kind of the, the mood of, of what the, the moose are doing. Uh, you know, if you're going to be raking or cow calling, um, you know, this, they say the, the rule of thumb is you don't want to cow call unless you hear cows, calling you know but i mean i've I've yet to hear one and uh you know so but (laughs) you know so (laughs) it sounded like you did pretty good uh i'm assuming you're just mouth calling or there's no reads or anything like that like yeah no it's just yeah it's just strictly it's just strictly mouth calling Mm -hmm. um and what's funny is uh you know how i said i've not yet to hear a, a cow call um it's funny. That's how I brought one of the bulls in this, this trip was, was a, a cow call. And, uh, you know, so I guess that golden rule of, you know, don't call unless you hear them. It doesn't, 
yeah. Yeah. I think it's just an old wives tale or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> they say elk or call shy and I call him in. So, I mean, yeah, I call exactly. Mine in. So, I mean, it's one of those things you got to, you know, know when, you know, throw anything you can out there. Oh, yeah. Um, but um, that's cool. Yeah. You, you mentioned, uh, um, in, in the video series, you mentioned like you're looking for a legal bull. What what exactly is a legal, mm-hmm. legal bull there in uh, in Alaska? Uh, so a legal bull, it's all all depends on what unit you're hunting in. Uh, oh, okay. Just like just like any other state, you know, some some units, you know, you can only, you can harvest this and you can harvest that. You know, two years ago we hunted a unit that was four brow tines or more on one side, um, or fifty inches or or bigger. Uh, this year we hunted a unit that was three brow tines or more, um, or 50 inches. You know, some units can be four cantlered or 50 inches, you know, it's just, just depends. Uh, and then, and the thing is too, non-residents have a different, um, requirement than residents. Um, yeah. And so, and really, you got to really pay attention to what your, uh, to what your regulations are and then as as well as as paying attention to how to how to how to judge you know a moose so that you don't end up uh you know on the on the wrong side of the law you know yeah of course gotcha yeah no for sure (laughs) i mean that's just like anything else you know uh having a judge in the field um so you're doing your strategies, your glassing, your calling. Um, you know, how far away are you going from, you know, from your? I guess I'm assuming you're camping near the river, mm-hmm. and then you're you're going out from there uh, to, yeah. to to hunt. Like, are you going miles out from 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 the river, or are you just kind of around the area? Uh, you try to we try to camp, you know, within say one to 200 yards off the river uh that way you're off of the you're out of the out of the elements you know out of the wind and uh, you're up in the trees and you can you know have a little bit of shelter but from there um it really just depends on on uh where we were hunting like one spot the closest lake was uh you know 50 yards and then another spot the closest this lake was right at a mile. Um, it, it really just depends on the exact spot, but for the most part, it's it's fairly close within within reasonable distance. Because another thing you got to take into consideration is, you know, if you're successful, uh, you know, getting that that animal back to camp without killing yourself. <laughs> you <know>? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that, that's why I was asking, like, how far away are you getting from camp? <laughs> you know. Because you know, in Colorado, yeah. you can be miles, you know, away. From yeah. Camp. Oh, yeah. And it seems like you were, you know, I can't, couldn't tell exactly from the video, but you, it looked like you were within a mile or so from, from. Uh, yeah. From the river. And you you try to stay close. And another factor is, um, trying. I don't I don't know exactly how to explain it, but uh, walking through muskeg bogs and tundra and all that stuff there's not really any way to describe it uh that i can think of unless you've done it but the only thing i can think of is if you imagine basically trying to walk across lily pads you know and it Uh just and it's just it's it beats you up it wears it wears you down so quick um you know you'll be stepping from high spot to high spot you know just trying to stop from you know keep yourself from stepping in a in a hole and you yeah and you step on one spot well you sink down to your knee in in mud and water well then you gotta you know kind of crawl out of that and and take another 10 steps and it happens again you know so (laughs) i got you i can imagine (laughs) or i can imagine at least um (laughs) wow so so how did you decide like when to move on like all right, there's nothing here. It, it must be hard because I'm assuming once you go down river, you ain't, you ain't going back, right? No, I mean, you no, had to make the decision. Yeah. Okay, this is <laughs> we're gonna move on, but there's no coming back. It's one of those things, like you know, in the back country, yeah. or, you know, the mountains, you can always go back to a previous spot. But it seems like yeah. this kind of hunt, it's 
let's move on and you're done. <laughs> oh yeah, no, definitely. There's no, there's no outboard on that, on yeah. the, the raft to get you back up river. <laughs> right. Um, I, you know, it's, I mean, I was the first in line to shoot and, uh, you know, it's my tag, I guess. So I, you know, I guess sort of had a little bit more of a, you know, say so, but at the end of the day, you know, it's, it was, you know, it's a group decision on, on what we all, you know, think is, is best. And I mean, for the most part, since, you know, it's, I'm hunting with my brother and my dad, you know, for for the most part, we're all on the same page, you know, with, with a lot of things. So, Mm -hmm. uh, there was one, there was one day and one instance that, uh, I was set on, on, uh, doing, doing one thing and, uh, they weren't too happy about it, but <laughs> we ended up, we ended up doing it yeah. and, uh, it, it ended up being good. You know, we got that bear out of it. So it wasn't, oh, yeah, that's right. You're dead, it wasn't you're too bad to bear a, a uh, deal. So, yeah, I've been there. I mean, I, I, the two, you know, with my two cousins <laughs> in the back country and it, there's always a, there's always a point in, in any back country where there's, there might be some tension <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, this way, you said that way. You know, I said it, it becomes. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of the day, you depend on each other to get back home. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, cool, man. So, uh, share a little bit about camp life. Uh, I know you said you're base camping, you know, kind of near the river, uh, and, and you kind of day hunted from there. Um, cause your total hunt was what, 20 some odd days, no? Uh, I would say hunting days was like 18, 19, but we we're, you know, we were out there, uh, coming up, cu- coming on to 21 days, uh, you know, 20 days, 20 full days. And then basically a half day, mm-hmm. uh, the, yeah, camp life, um, it's a lot of camp chores you gotta do. That's for sure. <laughs> I sure. Imagine. Um, it's not like. There's, it's not, you know, just, it's not just hanging out and goofing off. You know, there's constantly, um, constantly chores that got to be done from chopping. If you want to have a fire, which I mean, it gets cold at night and you want to warm up before you go to bed. Um, you know, chopping wood, cutting wood, um, filtering water all the time. I'm, you know, constantly doing that. That's, that's a never ending deal. Um, you know, I mean, it, and then some days, you know, if the weather's bad, you're stuck in your tent all day, you know, that, that can get, can get old. Um, uh, but I mean, as far as camp life, I guess it's not, it really too much different than anywhere else other than, uh, you know, that's, that's home for an extended period of time, not just, you know, say seven days or something like that. Right. And, uh, got to make it kind of, kind of cozy and, and, uh, comfortable, I guess. So, yeah. What, what were the temperatures like? What was, what was kind of the daily? Uh, so this, so this trip, the weather was really was, uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't ask for any better. I mean, maybe if it had gotten a little colder, it might've been a little bit, a little bit, you know, more action. I guess as far as moose goes, but couldn't have asked for better weather. It was uh, usually upper mid to upper thirties to uh, it might it might get up to fifty degrees, um, and then there was a few mornings where it's you know and nights where it's definitely you know in the twenties. Uh, snow snowed a few times um, on us. Not not anything crazy where there's, you know, accumulation on the ground, just kind of snow piled up on a few things or ice and, and, uh, you know, it did rain just a little bit, but not, not enough to, to, you know, keep us from hunting or, or, uh, you know, keep us in, the, keep us in the tent or, you know, not, not have to worry about meat, you know, storage or anything like that. So. All right. Cool. And uh, we'll probably get into a little deeper later. Did, what I'm assuming you're, you're in grizzly country, so did y'all do anything? For, oh yeah, <laughs> for for grizz awareness. I mean, I know. <laughs> I mean, aside, I mean, did you hang food in the trees, that kind of stuff. Like, did, did you? Uh, 
how you know, I'm assuming you're doing all that. Uh, yeah. So there's definitely uh, big bears all over where they're spawning, and the bears are there. Um, we didn't see the only bear we saw was that one we killed, that black bear. Uh, you know, the bear, the bears are more scared of you, I think, than than you are of them. Um, but as far as like uh, precautions, I mean, you know, we had we take a, a bear fence. Um, it's a little. I think the brand is uh, UDAP, U D A P, mm-hmm. and it runs off a of two, two or four. I think I think four D cell batteries, and uh, you know it's a little three strand uh, fence that you put around the tent and everything in our gear. And I haven't been shocked by it. I haven't tested it out to see how it feels, <laughs> but they say, they say, you know, it'll give them a little zap, you know, to get them away. And, and, uh, luckily we've never had any issues, you know, with that. But as far as like, you know, hanging, hanging food in a tree, uh, we really just keep our food right inside that bear fence. Um, oh, you know, some people will say that's, that's, you know, not good, but, we don't eat inside the tent, so there's not, not that. Or we eat inside the tent, but we don't cook inside of the tent. Um, you know, all food stays out of the tent. We don't bring food in there, you know, unless it's just dinner time. We're eating, you know, freeze-dried meals out of the bag, and then it goes right back outside. Uh, another thing that we do is uh, mothballs. Mothballs, we take uh, several, several... Um, I guess boxes of those drop a, a, a little bag of them in pantyhose. That way you can tie them off onto stuff. Huh. And, uh, that seems to be, that seems to work. Um, whether it does or not, I don't know, but we've never had any issues with bears mm. so far. So I guess you could say it works. That, that's um, a deterrent? That's a deterrent? Yeah. Uh, huh. something about, yeah. Yeah. Basically, you know, they get that strong mothball smell and, you know, it kind of, jams up their nose and they don't want to want anything to do with that is is my guess huh. well that's good so. you didn't have any encounters yeah <laughs> <I'm kidding. laughs> i'd be on high alert um for i mean the black bear is oh, not yeah. too worried about but the, the grizzlies i don't know you hear stories um yeah it's I, i've been around them you know fishing and stuff and it's as long as you you're aware of where they're at and what they're doing, it's not too big of a deal. But still, you know, I'm like, I'm there hunting moose, not not uh, don't want to be messing with a bear, yeah, you know, you know exactly. a big bear. <laughs> exactly. Did you uh, did y'all carry bear spray? What did y'all, as far as did you have a sidearm? Uh, no, you know, we don't. We didn't take. We don't take any bear spray um, or or sidearms. Um, I mean, between my rifle and my brothers um you know i think we could fend off a bear you know fairly well yeah fairly well if something was to happen and uh you know they to me if i had a pistol you know i'd and something was to happen i'd empty the clip you know and i doubt i'd even even hit the bear so (laughs) yeah that's what they say you may not even you're so Hyped up, you may not even yeah. hit, hit what you're aiming at. That's why I think yeah. the bear spray is probably my first <laughs> go-to. <in there. laughs> you know, at least yeah. you can shoot that the uh, cloud. But uh, yeah, that's yeah. Good. I've always yeah. I just be worried that you know I'd, I'd you know hit that bear spray and end up spraying myself in the face before it gets the bear. You know, <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> uh, Cool man. Well, you did a pretty awesome uh, uh, gear dump on your on your channel, um, kind of what you had in your bag. But uh, I'd like to pick your brain a little bit more about about the gear you took and stuff. Um, let's start with your weapon. Like, what what did you run for? Your, you know, what was your setup going? You know, for caliber bullets, etc. So I took uh, my three thirty eight Win Mag. Uh, it's a Savage 116, you know, stainless barrel and stuff, synthetic stock. Uh, I mean, you don't have to have stainless or anything, but stainless is nice. You don't have to worry about taking any gun oil with you. You know, when you got 
real wet conditions, stuff like that. Uh, bullet wise, just running two, 250 grain, uh, Sierra, uh, soft point boat tails, those game kings. Um, they shoot really well out of that gun and they're a solid, you know, bonded bullet. Uh, powder wise, running, uh, eight, the Hodgson H4350 seems to, to do, to, to do well in that, in, in that rifle. Um, and then as far as the optics on it, got a Leopold BX5 with two to 10 by 42 with the, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of that reticle. It's a, it's a duplex with the, uh, on and off red dot in it. Um, and I have that just because, you know, at low light, you're shooting at a dark animal and you got, you know, black crosshairs and sometimes it'd be hard to see. So I have that, that, uh, red dot option on there if I need it. And then the stock on that rifle, um, you know, I've just kind of paint, I've done my own paint on it and then, uh, bedded it and you know to accurize it a little bit and uh i mean the gun shoots probably better than i can shoot so <laughs> and what are you what are you uh setting at you got uh zero where you're zero at at 200 like are you banking on a far shot up there or what are you kind of expecting um so i I'll ha i have it uh basically uh you know what do they call it your your dope charts uh basically uh, just chart it out to 500 and, and I'll shoot it out to 500, uh, you know, just to double check everything and make sure that, that those, those MOA clicks are right. And, and, uh, you know, double check and, and, uh, but really, um, you know, anything from, I'd say 25 yards out to 500, really. I mean, you it's hard to say exactly, okay. you know, what distance to expect and just because you just don't know where you're going to find one. And like, I mean, the, the one bull that I called in, I mean, if, if I would have shot it, I would have shot it, at, you know, seven yards, you know, could have poked him with the gun barrel. So <laughs> that's a bow shot. Right there. That's a... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, that's crazy. All right, cool. Um, yeah, you, you, you know, you had a lot of, uh, Seemed like you had a lot of must haves, uh, and you talked about that packable saw, um, and, and you showed a little bit of you using it, you know, cutting, uh, that was pretty impressive, man, that using that, that, that packable saw to cut, I mean, you were cutting huge logs. Dude. Like, oh, wow. yeah. Man, <laughs> so yeah. Just no, to get no. through the river, or that, I guess it was a, a creek, uh, get, get into the river. Um, but, uh, yeah. Yeah. Those saws are the bomb, man. <laughs> yeah, I wanted, to get awesome. one. I wanted to get one just cause. yeah it's a uh it's a uh sven's sven saw s-v-e-n oh, okay. is the is the name uh it's some small family owned company that uh i think shoot i think they might make them out of their dang garage for all i know wow. uh, but man those things i mean they just pack up and you know they fold up in their handle and they have like a I want to say it's like a 21 inch blade. And I mean, on that soft wood, like pine and, and birch and spruce, man, it, it does some work on that stuff, you know? So I'm assuming you use it for firewood too. You used it for cutting. Oh yeah. 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 yeah no, yeah, any, anything that needs cutting really. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Um, uh, waders, I'm gonna assume were must have. I mean, because it looked like you pretty much wear, wearing waders all day, every day. Oh yeah, yeah. That's a uh, you live in those things. Uh, you know, you get back from the trip and you don't even want to hear the words waders for another year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you want to you want to have the best waders and wading boots. You know that you can justifiably buy. Uh, yeah, I think I I was trying to remember what i so i have a pair of sims um i think they're the headwaters which is like the middle middle of the of the road as far as cost wise from sims mm -hmm. um you know but shoot two years ago i got away with some cheap uh caddis waiters you know that were like 130 bucks you know they worked i never had any leaks or or tears in them but this trip uh i sat on a log with a a little bitty broken branch on it and put a hole in the seat of my waders. So, I mean, 
you know, I mean, they're going to take a beating no matter what you do. So, right. right. And like you were describing earlier, I'm assuming they're needed because you're just walking through m- marsh. Oh and yeah. And not just the yeah. river itself, but you know, yeah. Even just yeah. Running. Every, everything is, is wet. If it's been dry for a week, you walk through the, through the brush and everything's just wet. Uh, the ground is wet. And like I said, you know, you're walking, it's like walking on those lily pads wow. and you just take one step and next thing you know, you're knee deep in, in, you know, basically water, you know, every, everything is basically a swamp right? really. And it, there's, I mean, I guess you could go without waders, but I mean, you'd be miserable. <laughs> no, no way I'd go out there without waders. You couldn't yeah. pay me enough to do it. Yeah, no, it seems like that's definitely you know, that's like going out there with a weapon. <laughs> you got to, yeah, 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 yeah basically. Yeah. So for sure. Any, uh, any, any gear you wish you had? Uh, you know, I don't know. As far, I can't really think of anything as far as, as uh wish that I had. Um, there's just a number of things that, you know, are really important to have, you know, like those waiters, you know, good saw, um, good good really good rain gear basically the best that you can that you can get uh that's extremely important you know rain jacket is is everything uh as far as clothes go you know having wool you know wool gets wet and it's it's still keep you warm um you know there's there's no way around it you're going to get wet um and you're going to get rained on in alaska no matter where you're hunting or what type of hunting um i'm trying to think of a few other things rope is another thing that's a huge huge deal um i know we try to keep basically no less than like 500 feet of paracord with us uh whether you're lashing stuff you know down on the rafts or hanging meat in a tree you know i mean anything really you need so much rope uh you you don't realize how much you need until you're you've used pretty much all of it you know um tarps are another big thing tarps uh Oh man, oh, really? I think, yeah, like I, I keep, I, I didn't do it in that, that gear review that I did on, on my channel, but, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know why I left them out, but tarps, um, I keep a, uh, I think it's like a 10, I think it's 10 by 10. Uh, it's that seek outside Colorado tarp, you know, one of those sill nylon tarps. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, I think the name of it is sheep tarp. It's made by Kafar. I think they call it a sheep tarp. You know, it's a little bit smaller. I keep that in my backpack all the time. That way, if if we're hunting somewhere and need to get out of the rain, you can pitch that thing with your trekking poles and sit under it and stay dry. Um, You know, that. And then also just those regular, uh, you know, normal blue uh, tarps, you know, that you get at like Walmart or Home Depot. Um, And then, shoot, I think another, well, I would say another thing is really important is a fire starter having a fire starter that can get you a fire going with wet wood in wet conditions and while it's cold that's a that's a big big thing um i know before we went two years ago we we tested out a number of fire starters just trying to figure out which one you know would work best because i mean a lot of people be like oh you know i just use cotton balls and and uh, vaseline works great well so yeah it works good but you know there's other products out there that work a little bit better you know they might cost a little more but uh you know when you're (laughs) you know floating along it's dark and you got to have camp and you got to get a fire because it's 25 degrees and you got ice on everything you got to warm up so you don't get hypothermia you know or or frostbite you know that fire starter you're gonna be wish you (laughs) wish you paid a little bit for it you know for sure so what'd you wind up getting going with on the fire starter uh fire starters the uh what is the name of that stuff uh it comes in a little tin can it's made by uh, there we go pyro putty yeah okay the uh the blue one okay yeah, I've been wanting to try one. some, but I haven't had the, the chance to try any of it. So it's pretty legit. Yeah, it's good stuff. Uh, the only complaint I have about it is if you don't, you you know, it doesn't last forever in that tin. Um, you know, it, I would I would probably get a new I would probably get a new little tin. Uh, 
you know, every two years, I guess. Uh, yeah, depending on how you store it as well. But I, I would, you know, definitely if you if you have it and you, you know, are going to use it on multiple trips, you know, and say within you know a year or two or something, you know, I would check it before you leave just to make sure that it's it's still good. Cool. But other than that, it's good stuff. And that's that's use that as your kindling. I'm assuming. Um, sort sort of. Usually, just take some little twigs and stuff, or little wood chips, I guess, for kindling, and use that as just like uh, you know how you would like newspaper oh, or whatever. It's it's a it. it's a cool yeah it's a cool thing. You just take a little bit. I mean, not much bigger than say your thumbnail. You roll it up in a ball, and you can just stick it to a piece of wood, uh, you know, and light it on fire, and it gets it going. Cool. I might have to look into that next time I, I go out to, uh, to Colorado or something. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's it's good stuff. Um, I know uh, it looked like y'all were running three rafts this year. Two, uh, two rafts, two, two, rafts? two rafts. Yeah. So go a little, bit, a little bit on the rafts. I mean, I guess are you are you renting those? Or how big are they? That kind of stuff. Uh, so we bought those oh, last okay. summer. Um, it's the same ones we've used before that we've rented. Uh, they, they're made by pristine ventures. Uh, the model we use is a pioneer extreme. Uh, um, you know, it's a, it's a PVC raft, uh, real similar to say like an NRS raft, uh, kind of like basically just like any other whitewater raft. Um, you know, but this one, this is just a little bit longer. Uh, they're like 16 foot, 17 foot, something like that. Um, and they're like 50 inches wide and, you know, they have a, an inflatable removable floor in them. I think they carry something like 1800 pounds or so. Uh, you know, I mean, and they're, a, they're a real sturdy raft. Uh, you know, they're easy, easy to, easy to row, easy to set up, um, you know, easy to inflate and everything. And what's nice is they're a, uh, you know, they have four, four air chambers. So if something was to happen, you know, you're paddling along and, and uh, say a sweeper is sticking out and pokes a hole in, in one of those chambers, well, you have the floor and three other chambers, you know, oh. to keep you, keep you floating so that you, <laughs> you're not going yeah, under. That makes sense. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh yeah. And you didn't have any yeah. mishaps on the rafts? No. Uh, no, no mishaps. Um, but for the most part, the stuff we were floating is, is pretty calm. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not some, you know, crazy experienced rafter by any means. So we, we try to limit our, our floating and, and, uh, rivers that we decide to, to raft, you know, to be pretty calm and not, gotcha. not, not crazy. Not class four whatever the class <laughs> yeah <I'm> at, you know <laughs> yeah we draw we we draw the line at, at class two and, and uh that's that's about that's as much as we want to deal with <laughs> right <laughs> it's, it's, it's i can imagine like you can't really um but i'm assuming you had well you brought up a good point like how did you how did you blow them up like surely you uh, take... so yeah they they come with uh it's basically similar to a a bicycle pump, but what's nice about them is they're two way so that you can blow them up a little bit faster. Oh, okay. uh, you know, it inflates on, you know, when you, I guess, pull it, pull it in. Yeah. Both, both directions, you know? Oh, okay. Uh, so it's works a little bit quicker. Um, uh, but yeah, you can rent those rafts. Um, you know, I know that same company makes like four or five other, other rafts. Um, yeah, shoot. I think those things rent for like a hundred, like the model we use. I think they rent them for like a hundred and twenty bucks a day or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, now they're great rafts. Um, shoot, I after using those, I don't know that that uh, I haven't I haven't come across any that that I would think fits fits hunting, um, you know, and what you need it. Well, for that need a rap to be like or for yeah, yeah for that time on it because they weren't yeah. the kind that you put like I've heard of the alpaca rafts where you put stuff in mm-hmm. the, inside the 
the in the, the rack. in the tubes, yeah. the chambers. Yeah, so yeah. These weren't those kind, right? No, no, no. These just they're basically your your uh, normal PVC yeah. whitewater raft. You know, they they got a uh, uh, you know they come with I guess a, two seats um, and then like a cargo net on each end and then. You got the rowing rig that basically just straps down with, uh, you know, your regular old sense straps, you know, nothing, nothing fancy, pretty, pretty simple, you know, setup and, and, uh, operation and everything. Yeah. It didn't look like you were, uh, or at least you didn't film any, any, uh, fast water. You're just kind of chill. Just kind of. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. rolling backwards. You didn't feel any, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, but I took my, uh. Shoot, I took my my uh, little head mount for my GoPro just in case we got into some. And in, well, we were we, on the trip. We were expecting uh, this the, like a ten mile section of, of some decent rapids, and so I I brought that little head mount for my GoPro just in case you know we we went through it if we didn't get off before then, and uh, just to capture some of that. But we ended up getting you know getting out of, getting getting off the river before we got to those that section and so that was that was kind of a nice little <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> little way to to get out of that very cool very cool so i mean since you brought it up it, it, uh camera gear what did you run for a camera did you pretty much just run your phone you have a gopro i'm assuming yeah so i took uh one of my gopros which is just a hero five nothing nothing fancy um and then I'm trying to think where my camera is, but, uh, yeah, my other camera is just, a a, uh, Canon. It's just a, really just a handy cam. Um, it's nothing, nothing fancy. And I put a, yeah, I just have like a little mount and a microphone that I've put on it. And okay. I have a couple of lenses I screw on in the office. Nothing, nothing fancy or expensive, you know, just, a, yeah, just enough to, to capture video and sound, you know? Right. Of course. So. Yeah. That's why, I mean, that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm dabbling in it, and, but I'm just messing yeah. with my phone. Like I'm just getting, you know, yeah. we, got, we got a pretty good camera in our pocket all the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Shoot. And it's, I mean, a lot of people don't realize the phone, man, that takes some, some really good footage. Uh, right. I've, I've recorded several, several hunts just, strictly from my phone um you know the whole the whole hunt you know itself just just from my phone but cool cool well uh recap the hunt real quick for us or you know highlights and i mean and of course you know the moment of truth i mean oh man you know we see it on video <laughs> but it, it's it's one thing yeah. to see the, the and then it's a different thing to uh to hear hear the story let's put it that way <laughs> oh man so shoot you want you want the whole breakdown, or you just want a few highlights of of the trip? Whatever you want to do. Like we, got, you know, I got time, so whatever you want, <laughs> you know, we can do the highlights, and then you know, uh, and then the, the I mean, there's some, there's yeah, yeah, there's definitely some highlights, but I, I'll just give you the rundown. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, we we got dropped off at a lake uh, that was, I would say, about it's probably like six hundred yards from a creek. And that creek drains to the main river we planted on hunting. Um, we got so we we got in late because of weather. Um, we made it almost to almost to where we we're going to get dropped off, and it was so foggy. I mean, we really thought we were about to have to turn around and go back and come in the next day. Wow. And what stinks about that is, you know, you're going to get you get charged for that flight whether you get dropped off or not. So oh. we're like, you know fingers crossed like please just get us in under that fog please you know we don't want to have to pay for that but yeah i'm jumping yeah where's the jump yeah, exactly yeah yeah where's the parachute, where's the parachute? <laughs> exactly uh so we got dropped off and it, i mean it was late and we all just looked at each other and we're like we ain't we ain't trying to get to that creek we're just camping right here on that lake so we camped out there on that lake and and killed time that evening uh just went fishing and and uh, caught some pike i wish i had taken some some video and stuff of that but i we i didn't uh we caught some decent pike i mean all the pretty much the three of us each caught 
at least four or five fish that were 24 to 30 mm-hmm. inches or so. Mm-hmm. It's, I mean, it was, it was fun. And, and then the next day, you know, portaged everything over the creek and worked our way down the creek, had to cut, I don't know how many dang log jams out. And, uh, I got down a little ways and, and we're, you know, I'm looking at, at my maps on my phone and I'm thinking, you know, surely we're almost there to the river. You know, why is this taking so long? And all of a sudden we come across a beaver dam and this was the biggest beaver dam I've ever seen. This thing's like five foot tall and I don't know, probably 40 yards wide. Wow. I mean, crazy. I mean, there was no way you could cut that thing out. Mm-hmm. So we had to portage, portage from there. Uh, luckily the river, uh, meandered around basically 180 degrees and we we're able to portage over over to that and cut out a little bit of time there and finally got to the river made it down the the main river where we're hunting probably 10 miles i guess you could say and found found a little bit of sign but there was you know bear and, and wolf tracks by it and we're like well you know this is the first stuff we've come across or the first say decent stuff we've come across you know let's just give it a shot so we stayed there for, I think, two full days, and it was like, well, nothing's happening, and and uh, there's bound to be fresher sign down river. So we packed up and headed down river and checked out a, I don't know, probably, I'm guessing somewhere in the eight to ten range of different places, you know that we found sign, but it's like, well, there's bear tracks and there's wolf tracks and they're all just following those moose tracks. Like they're tracking the dang things, you know? So we finally come, uh, you know, come across a spot where there's a little bit of sign and this area just looks really good. You know, there's kind of a hill on one side that you can watch over this whole meadow and this lake. And it's just like, Oh, this, this just looks good. looks moosey. You know, it'd be easy packing an animal out of here if we get one. Yeah. And we stayed there for, and it was a good place to camp. And we stayed there for uh, four days, I guess. And uh, I think it was four days. Well, we ended up calling in two cows. And the cool thing about that was one of those cows that we called in, she she came in to, I think it was, I think the closest she got was like 21 yards. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it was, was kind of cool because she had a calf and she was just right there in front of us for a good while, you know, at 20 yards, you know, had no idea we were sitting there in the grass hiding. And, uh, you know, she's kind of mewing and, and grunting and calling how, whatever, you, whatever you just, you know, the name is that yeah. they do. And she's kind of look, but it was funny is she kept looking at us looking for this bull that she could have swore she heard raking a tree, you know, right. but obviously it was, you know, it was us. Right. And then, uh, <sighs> I think we left, that was like the second day there, or third day, and then we left the next day, because it was like, well, if there's two cows here, and they're looking for a bull, there ain't, there can't be a bull in the in the vicinity, there's no way there's a, a bull here, because if, he, if there was, you know, he'd be with these cows, mm-hmm. so we packed up and did the same thing over and over, you know, over again, checked out eight, eight or ten places, and found a couple places that looked good, but for some reason... It was like every lake we came to was, I guess, um, you know, apparently they'd had a pretty wet year. And so all the lakes were just completely full. And, you know, the, the water, the water line was all the way up, you know, to the tree line. Okay. So it was like, you can't, you, yeah, you can't, you can't get out there, and, you know, kind of check things out or, or anything. You're going to have to sit back in the trees and just hope that that moose goes out there, you know, <laughs> swimming around <laughs> and uh so we finally uh found a well we didn't really find a place this was this is where we had a little bit of a an argument uh <laughs> you know we we look yeah we we looked at a whole bunch of places and it's like these it's just they you know I, we don't want to get out of here because this looks good but i just we we can't see getting a, an animal out of here uh so I was looking at my maps and there's this one ridge separating the the drainage we're in from this drainage that comes straight out of this, you know, basically, I guess, sort of high alpine valley. 
and it that drainage looks i don't know why but i have like this uh, had this obsession with it and i was like i know there's a there's got to be a big moose up there in that valley if we get up on that ridge maybe we can find him we can call him up to that ridge and then Mm -hmm. pack him down well they're like well no no, that's going to be way too far to to hike and do all that that's crazy well finally convince them and we go camp at the base and my dad's finishing up you know doing a few things putting up the bear fence and stuff and he tells me and my brother you know y'all go y'all go pick out a trail you know the the easiest looking trail up to the top there so i go all right well we we go about halfway up and it doesn't take us but 15 minutes to get halfway up there and it's like an 1800 foot climb it takes like 15 15 minutes for us to go like 900 feet up we're like oh this this won't be bad at all go back down and it's dark and you know eat and go to bed well the next day, wake up early and we start that hike. Well, we get but 200 yards past where me and my brother made it and it turns into the thickest, nastiest <laughs> stuff. <laughs> nothing but, nothing but alders and oh, it was bad. It ended up taking us two and a half hours just to get up there. Oh, <laughs> <wow>. <laughs> so, yeah, so you can just imagine the, yeah. the bickering going on yeah. between the three of us, you know, and they're all like, God, dang, I can't believe, you know, you, you talked us into coming up here. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. You know, this is going to be worth it. You know, it's going to be worth it. I want to hear no negativity. Right. Well, we, yeah, yeah. Well, we, yeah. So we get up there and I mean, we weren't there, but for, maybe five minutes just long enough to realize that we're standing in blueberry patches and they're everywhere and i look over to my my left and there's this black bear feeding on blueberries you know like almost a mile away it's like oh man you know we got to go get that thing and i tell them like hey like there's a there's a bear let's go get it it looks like a good one and they're like oh okay yeah yeah so they go back to eating blueberries. So, <laughs> all right, well, see y'all later. <laughs> so I grab my stuff and take off, and and they're like, "Hey, where are you going?" You know, and and uh, I'm like, "There's a bear." Did y'all not hear me? And it's wind. It's 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 super windy up there, so it's hard to hear. Oh, I see. And uh, they're like, "Oh, a bear? Where?" I'm like, "Right there." You know. <laughs> and so I'm like, "Oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, it looks like a good bear. You know, let's go get it." So. We ended up, you know, dropping our stuff and going over there and, and, uh, got really lucky because that the wind was terrible. Um, if it would have switched just a little bit, Mm -hmm. I mean, if it would have just blown a hundred yards to the, like if we're facing that bear Mm -hmm. and we're at six o'clock and that bear's at 12 o'clock, if that wind would have blown from, moved from blowing at six to two, to six to 12, we'd have been, you know, done and, uh, ended up working out, uh, got in there close enough and got a shot off quick enough. My dad got that bear and that was, that was cool. Um, it was kind of cool, kind of cool cleaning that bear, up, you know, up on top of that ridge, looking down at both valleys is is pretty picturesque type Mm -hmm. deal. And, uh, we got that, it took us another, two and a half, three hours to get that bear back down to camp. And we got down there and we all looked at each other and we're like, there ain't no way we're getting a moose, moose from there. Ain't happening. (laughs) (laughs) So Yeah. Oh yeah. So we, you know, pack up and move on and same thing, you know, just, you look for, for sign and, uh, we're floating along and, and not finding a whole lot and we're starting to get kind of worried, you know, because we're starting to dwindle down on days, you know, of, of the season and there's, we're just not finding, you know, what should, what should be there, uh, by this, you know, time in, in the trip, uh, you know, cause the later the trip goes on, the rut starts to pick up and, and things should be, you know, heating up and it just doesn't seem like that. Well, finally, uh, there's this spot we had marked on a map on our maps. Uh, it was just like a little series of lakes that was, I guess, like three quarters of a mile off the river that looked pretty good and it had a little bit of, there was a little bit of terrain around it, you know, some hills and stuff. And it's like, well, you know, that looks like it could be pretty good. So we went in, we found a spot to camp near there 
and uh, you know, stayed there. I think four days, four days or five days. I don't know. All the, all, a lot of those right. days end up running together, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, so it was four or five days and uh, there was, we found fresh sign on that first day. And then the second day there was more sign. The third day, uh, we, we called in a, a bull, but he was, he was small um, you know, it was hard to tell at the time, but, uh, my brother got video of him on his phone and it was like, okay, that's definitely a, you know, a sub legal bull. You know, there's he's no way he's 50 inches and no way he's, you know, got, he only had two brow tines on each side. So that was exciting, but discouraging at the same time, you know, it was like, well, we finally see a bull and, and he's definitely too small. Mm-hmm. So, and I think we had, it was three days of the season left three or three or four days of the season left so then that fourth day there we uh didn't see no didn't see nothing Hmm. again and what's weird what's weird i don't i haven't really noticed this with other areas as i have alaska um there will be days where it's like the woods are completely dead. There's nothing going on. Hmm. There's no, you don't hear birds. You don't hear, I mean, it's just it's huh. a completely dead silence and, and it's just completely void of life. Wow. And then there'll be days where there's birds singing everywhere and, you know, it's like everything's alive again. Huh. And then the next day it'd be dead. And it's the weirdest thing. So that day four, everything was dead and just nothing. Well, we're all discouraged and kind of goofing off at, at camp that night. And I had made the comment. I was like, you know, I'm going to take those dang game bags out of my backpack. I, that's just jinxing us. I know it. You know, my brother was <laughs> laughing. He's like, you know, you know, he thinks it's funny. And I didn't th- say anything else about it. Well, the next morning we wake up. And first thing I do once I got dressed, I open my backpack, grab them dang game bags and about punted them out the tent, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and, and, and he's laughing about it and whatnot. So they, there was some camp chores that needed to be done. And, uh, so they, they were like, well, we're going to do them and we'll come meet up with you later this afternoon. You know, where are you going to, where are you going to sit at? I was like, well, I guess, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to sit over here on this Ridge, uh, kind of where I had been. And, uh, I didn't take, so, so we carry a, a moose scapula with us, you know, to do raking. And, uh, I didn't take that scapula with me cause I was like, well, you know, it really hasn't been working. I'm just going to cow call. I ain't taking that thing. So I go to the mine there most of the day. And I think it was. It was about two o'clock or so. I hadn't done any cow calls and I was like, you know, um, I, I'm going to do something. So I sneaked down to the corner of the lake and let out a cow call and then follow up with another one, you know, like 20, 30 seconds after. And I sneaked back up to where I'm sitting and I, I kid you not, I sat my butt down and it was maybe 10 seconds after I had sat down. I just hear, just whop and uh, you know I'm, my attention just right away look over to my right where i hear that sound and i just hear a bullet whoa whoa and i'm like oh man oh gosh <laughs> and my first my first instinct i'm like oh man i really hope this ain't that bull from the other day and he's still hanging around here i mean cool but i really hope it's not that bull well he starts you know that bull's coming in like on a freaking string and he's coming quick so I kind of set up and he comes in below me and hit, at the angle he comes in, I'm like, well, he's got good paddles, but I, I can't tell, you know, if he's legal, I can tell he only has two brow tines on each side. So there's definitely not that it, he's got to be 50. Well, I can't tell if he's 50 cause it's side view. So, so he goes along basically below me where I'm at, you know, I'm on this Ridge and he comes below me right on the lake's edge and stops right behind these spruce trees and he's looking right exactly where I had just cow called. Right. I mean, he's just like glued on that spot. Look, you know, where's that cow at? Mm-hmm. 
Well, I don't know what, why he did it or, or what happened, but he makes a beeline up that ridge coming right towards me. And he comes by at like seven yards. <laughs> and the whole time he's just grunting and stuff. And I'm like, I'm shaking, you know, like, oh man, you know, I hope you don't walk too close because I'm going to have to shoot and, and, you know, spook him off, you know? Yeah. So, well, he ends up going right, right by me and, goes down and, and he disappears and I don't see him or hear him. And I was sitting there for five minutes and I'm like, you know, wow, where'd he go? And, uh, he then I'm like, well, I'm going to, I'm just going to slowly sneak up to that top of the top of the ridge and look, you know, see if I see his tracks, if he went, you know, down the ridge or, or over it on that backside, in that meadow down there. I get, as soon as I get to the top there, I see him down in that, that meadow and he's just, you know, working the grass over and everything. It's like, Oh, well, he starts staring off, you know, and I see the, this other bull coming in and, uh, they start, you know, doing their, their thing at each other and shoot. Oh yeah. They did that for, I, I think I watched them for, oh, it was probably 30, 40 minutes, you know, just dancing around each other, you know, like two little banny roosters. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. Yeah. So I, was, I mean, it's, so yeah, I'm assuming he wasn't legal then. At the time, because I couldn't get a good view, now, I could only see him from behind or a side view, and it's it's just too hard to, you know. And plus, I'm by myself. I only had my eye my eyes, and I'm trying to run the camera. I'm trying to keep yeah. my rifle on him to make you know if he is legal, you know, and yeah, yeah. hurry up and get a shot. And yeah. I'm trying to do four things at once, yeah, and it's just you know, and uh, the, and the whole time I'm cussing, you know, like. <laughs> gosh dang it the one time i need them you know they're not here <laughs> and uh you know they so they those bulls do their thing and and i'm keep i keep trying to get their attention like i'm i'm on top of the ridge grunting at them trying to get them to look at me well they're so busy with each other they don't even care you know what's going on i'm smacking trees and stuff just trying to make all sorts of racket you know, besides yelling at them, Hey, Hey, you know? <laughs> and, uh, so they, you know, do their thing and, and they split up and, and I'm just like, well, I watched the one that sort of won this little, uh, this little battle, I guess you could say I'm, I'm watching the one and he went in this little, this little spruce thicket that, uh, there's like, there's no way for him to get, get out of there without me seeing so I'm like, well, I'll just watch this and hopefully they show up over here and we can figure something out. And they, I lucked out. I was so lucky. They showed up like 10 minutes after those bulls disappeared mm. and we decided, you know what, we're going to, we're going to see about, uh, raking and, uh, see if, you know, he thinks that bull's trying to mess with him again or another one is. And, and, uh, sure enough, we, we raked for maybe 15 seconds and that bull comes sprinting. I have never seen a moose move this fast. Wow. He comes sprinting out of that spruce, just ready to light something on fire. Man. I mean, it is <laughs> crazy. Awesome. That's crazy. So cool. And I had told my brother, I said, Hey, you know, he's not 50 inches. He's dang close. But on one side, I think he's got enough brows. Sure enough. I was like, his right side, just pay attention to that. Don't look at anything else. Just look at his brows. And my brother had his spotter, you know, so he could zoom in and everything. And, and, uh, he sure enough pokes his head out behind the spruce. Brother's like, he's legal. As soon as he didn't even finish his sentence, you know, saying he's legal and I'm already, you know, sending one. (laughs) 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 So, and, uh, Luckily, you know, at first it was, what was crazy though, is most moose, when you hit them, you know, they kind of just puff up and they, they kind of stand there and, you know, take a few, yeah, they don't, they don't really do much. But when I hit him, man, he did a 180 spinning around and took off back the way he came. And at first I was like, oh my gosh, did I miss him? Like, you gotta be kidding me. This was like 250 yard shot. There's no way no way I missed this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, jacked another shell and, and shot at him again and hit him, hit him kind of high and far back a little bit. But after that second shot, he pretty much 
just tumbled. And uh, later on, we're cutting him up, you know, find out that first shot was actually in his heart. And I was like, well, how the, you know, he's a heart right. shot. How do you not just stand there and puff up, you know, and, right. you know, fall over? But, you know, stranger things, I guess. Right. And uh, spent the next day packing him out and lucked out that the weather was, was cold. So the meat was taken care of really, really well. And this was the, this was the craziest thing. I'll, I'll never forget this. So we're, we had determined that there was like, a, a there was a, an airstrip on a sandbar mm -hmm. that it was like, if the weather's good and we have a moose, we want to get out here so that we don't have to float this 10 miles of, of rapids that could be, could be, you know, not terrible, but right. we'd rather not have to do that with a whole moose on a, on a raft. Right. And we come across, we come up to this, this strip and there's a guy and a gal there. It's like, what the heck? You know, you don't ever expect to run into people, you know? <laughs> wow. And, uh, so we, you know, get out and talk to them. We're like, Hey, you know, we're planning on using the, the uh, airstrip here, and they're like, "Oh, well, this is private." We're kind of like, "Huh?" It's hmm. like I didn't know that these airstrips on on the river or really anywhere were private. They say, like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, it's private." We're like, whatever. And it's like, it, it, you know, they're looking at my moose and they're talking about they haven't seen any moose, and it's like, okay, I think I get what's going on, you know. Uh -huh. And we're just like, well, whatever, we'll just leave it be, like ain't going to argue with somebody, you know, out here. And, uh, so we float on and, and, uh, you know, the weather starts getting bad. It's starting to get really cold and really windy and, and getting, you know, irritated that that guy's like, yeah, this is a private airstrip, you know, and luck out that we come across a, an old miners cabin that we hadn't, uh, that we couldn't see, you know, from Google earth or anything like that. Right. And, uh, we ended up being able to get into that cabin, uh, you know, it wasn't locked or anything and, uh, slept in there to get out of the wind. And, and, uh, there was a stove, you know, to have a fire and, and keep warm. And the coolest thing, there was like a log book in there and there was entries from people stopping by, you know, from, I think, I think it was the, that log book was from like 1985 to 2003 or something like that was the last entry was 2003 it was just it was really cool you know going and going through reading that that log book uh hmm. you know That's just cool. different stories of people stopping by you know hey you know we were floating and, and uh, hunting or or uh you know how's the how's the the panning going you know how y'all got any gold lately just stopped by to say hi but y'all weren't here you know it, it's just it was cool to see that you know and, and read those those little entries. That's really cool. Yeah. That, yeah. That's really awesome. But yeah, I think that was, that was one of the cooler things of the trip was, was that right there. And then there was an airstrip there at that, that cabin on that, uh, sandbar. So we got taken out there and, and, uh, lucked out and didn't have to float those, those rapids that we didn't really want to, you know? Yeah. So very cool. <clears throat> How far was the pack out from where you dropped him? Uh, so that was, um, a, it was about a mile. It was between a, like a mile and a quarter and a mile and a half. It was like one point three one miles or something. It it wasn't fun. Uh, um, I would not suggest to anybody who ever wants to go moose hunting to ever shoot a moose that far from camp. That is not fun. <laughs> dude, I don't know how you do it. Dude. That's, kudos to you, man, and just the three of y'all, your dad and your brother. That's pretty awesome. Well, congrats again, man. That's a, that sounds like a pretty awesome story. So the the same bull that had come up seven years was this the one you shot. The same? No, so, two different. So bulls. that one that came that close, yeah, it was okay. two different bulls. That one that came that close, he was the one, uh, you know, that I that got chased off by that oh, other one you. that came in and and he disappeared and and uh, you know that's I, looking back at camp at at video, um, I'm pretty sure he was probably about fifty. Two fifty-three inches, but 
still that's just way too close, close to, to call. Yeah. No, yeah. Sure. Way and too yours, close. What did yours wind up being? He was forty eight. Um but he's got five five brow tines on one side, so okay. he was he was legal. Awesome. So awesome. And, yeah, I I can only imagine. <laughs> I can imagine the size, dude. I mean, I've never seen a moose oh, in person, but I know when I shot my elk, I was just in awe. <laughs> you know? Oh, like, yeah. So I can yeah, imagine they're no, probably they... twice the size of, the, of an elk. <laughs> no, they're like probably about three to four times the size of an elk. I mean, they're the only thing I can think of is just imagine basically, you know, your 1,800-pound, you know, buck and bull on stilts really i mean it's what they yeah. <laughs> it's what they look like you know i can imagine uh, just wow. a freaking massive animal wow i i can only imagine the, you know i had a hard time packing an elk out i can only imagine the the the, the, the bull but um that's awesome yeah man. and it, i mean the yeah to to put into perspective basically how big they are um you know like I can't even wrap my arms around their neck. I mean, that's that's you know how wow. how, how, how big of an animal they are. You know? <laughs> Dude, that's, what are you are you taking yeah. like six game bags, eight game bags? Oh yeah, like, I can only... so yeah, <laughs> yeah, a game bag for each quarter, a uh, game bag for each side of ribs, and then a game bag for tenders and and uh and the back straps. You know, I mean, shoot, you can't and then. And then a, a game bag for each side of the neck. Uh, oh, so, yeah, I mean, it's, yeah, Dang, it's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, you, you know, you filmed a little bit of your, of your pack out with that. Are you, are you deboning? Did you debone? Um, uh, no. So, um, you know, earlier I was saying how, you know, those units, um, you know, they're all different, uh, you know, as far as what's legal, you know, what's a legal moose and what's not. Well, there's also, uh, each unit has different, um, different, different requirements as far as meat goes. Like some, some units you're allowed to debone meat. Mm. Uh, some units you're not allowed, like some, like, uh, some units you cannot, you cannot take meat out of the field that's been deboned. It must stay on the bone taken out of the, out of the field. Yeah. Hmm. so yeah so like if you like leaving or it cannot be taken out of the unit deboned basically gotcha. so it has to stay on the bone whether you float it out of the unit or you fly it out of the unit you know it has to stay on the on the bone but really i would prefer it stay on the bone um because you're talking a hundred like those quarters i mean or anywhere from, you know, those shoulders are 125 pounds. Those hams are 150 pounds a piece. And when you're, ta- <laughs> when you're talking that much, that much weight, you know, think of 150 pounds of just dead weight. Yep. It's just flops all over. Well, yep. you got that bone in there. You have yeah, a little no, bit agree. of something to, yeah. yeah. yeah it no. makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, it does. And I think you're, you're running, well, you're running XO packs. I have an XO, so I, I got a, mm-hmm. you know, some my idea of, of what it feels like, but I wasn't <laughs> doing well, wasn't carrying no 150. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I struggled and with it, the, the 80 pounds is, yeah. that I had on. <laughs> <laughs> I will say though that I, I love those, those exo packs. Yeah. Um, but I think once you get to say anything over 100 pounds, you know, it's uh, all those packs are the same. Mm-hmm. They're going to, it's going to suck no matter what. Yeah. There's no, yeah. this pack's better than that. As long as it doesn't break, you yeah. know, it's, it's a good it'll pack. do the job. It's a good pack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I agree a hundred percent. Oh, that's awesome, man. And congrats again on, on that hunt and, and your success. Oh, there, thank man. you, man. Really appreciate you sharing the story. I think what we'll do is, is we'll do a, a separate episode about planning and how, you know, how, how someone mm-hmm. plans such a hunt. But, oh yeah. But for this part of it, I, I think that's a, uh, a good ending point. Well, I know this was your second time out. Uh, you said mm-hmm. you went two years ago and I know that's on, yeah. that's on your channel too when your, your dad shot a bull. Um, any, and I know from experience, at least, you know, in Colorado and elk hunt, every hunt you learn something. Every oh, hunt yeah, yeah, is, yeah. Is, a, is a learning experience. So I'm sure you went into this hunt 
um, you know, with, with more knowledge from the previous time. And, and I think you probably, if you were to go back again, you'd even go, uh, any, any lessons learned from this particular hunt? Uh, this time, um, I think I probably learned the most valuable lesson, um, as far as, and not just moose hunting, but hunting anything in general. And that is patience. Um, I'm, I'm a pretty patient hunter. Um, you know, I've learned through the years, I guess, you know, when to be patient, when to make things happen, I guess, but man, this hunt just tested my patience like no other. Um, and I didn't, you know, I obviously realized that while we're hunting, but looking back, you know, after we got back and everything was said and done and, and everything, I was like, you know, I really learned how to really be patient and uh you know not not uh you know just get too too caught up in in things or or too ahead of myself and stuff like that um also you know <laughs> I, I don't know if it's really a lesson per se but uh you know went into it with really high expectations and you know i just and and learned that you know it's just don't don't get you know, always expect the worst and hope for the best really, yeah. um, is, is something that, that really stuck from this trip is, is, uh, don't expect, you know, the best all the time, you know, is, yeah. is, uh, you know, yeah. just hope for it and prepare for the, <laughs> the worst. Yeah. No, I tell for, you know, people so, who've gone with me for the first time to, to Colorado, for example, and they'll say, look, the, the 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 odds are stacked against us. You need to go in. Yeah. With, you need to go in with the mindset you're going for the adventure of it. And, yeah. And if you if we harvest, that's icing on the cake. You know. Yeah. You need to go with the mindset of you're here for the for the experience and the adventure and you know being oh, in yeah. outdoors, being in God's country. That you know, be happy with that, and then you'll do good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, don't yeah. go. Oh yeah. Yeah, you'll be good. <laughs> So that's cool, man. Yeah. Well, again, man, I appreciate you uh, sharing your story with us, man. Uh, uh, tell folks where they can find your content and, and, and uh, your stuff. Uh, yeah. Um, so my YouTube channel is just New Divide Outdoors. Um, I also have an Instagram. It's uh, New Divide Outdoors. I think the handle is like at new underscore divide underscore outdoors. Uh, and then my email is just new divide, uh, dot outdoors at gmail.com. Uh, if you got any questions about this hunt or anything like that, you know, shoot me an email or send me a message on, uh, on Instagram or, or leave a comment on YouTube. You know, I try to make it, make it priority to respond to pretty much anybody, uh, whether, you know, positive or negative, you know, always, always respond to, to people, especially if they have a question, you know, so. Yeah, feel cool. free to, to reach out if you got any questions. Yeah, awesome. I'll put all your information in the show notes so uh, so people can uh, reach out to you and whatnot. And, and uh, to all your listeners out there, thanks for listening. I'm gonna, we're going to do a part two uh, with with Ethan. We're going to get into the planning how somebody you know gets into planning one of these hunts if 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 uh, somebody's so willing to do so. <laughs> 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 or you can live vicariously through uh, through Ethan's videos. <laughs> Um, but uh, thanks again for listening, everybody. Uh, and as always, let's take it outside.